You cannot almost imagine the scale of this place. It is enormous. The Great Barrier Reef goes from Bundaberg all the way up to Papua New Guinea. Yeah, it's bigger than most countries. There's many traditional owner groups that rely on the Great Barrier Reef. That's why we protect it. We don't have time to not use technology. So what are we going to do? There's a really urgent need for broad-scale reconnaissance imagery. So we basically come up with a very rapid survey method. Anyone that can snorkel can basically jump in the water and take your photo. You need to harness the tourism industry, fishermen, commercial boats, sailors. It's all out there. The question is, can you tap into it? Andy had called up and he had this grand vision about mapping the entire Great Barrier Reef. The crux of it is that one person gets in the water, takes their 20 photos, comes back onto the boat. We just upload our photos straight to the Dell Edge server and pff, amazing. Collectively, we nearly doubled the amount of reefs that we saw this year. The imagery that we've got is in the tens of thousands. Like, so I think that's the next space that tech's taking us is to assist with actually analyzing all of that data now, because it is, that is overwhelming. We're nearly at 100,000 images already. There's a limited number of experts with limited time. We need to now understand what is happening in these images. Citizen scientists do need some help. We'd already been working with Dell, and the conversation turned to, well, could you use a deep learning model or an AI solution? The AI is identifying different shapes and objects within the images. Any virtual volunteers can go in and label it, and then we can compare those results with what the AI is saying and what the experts are saying. The school program were the first group to use the online analysis platform. So that was my job to find out, is this a viable solution? I always knew like it'd be cool to help out, but I didn't really know how, being someone at school and all that. So it circled the plating coral here. So I'll go off on the side and find the plating coral. And then it'll circle another section and we've got plating coral again. Down here it's got all the all the different types of corals that you can choose from and it's got examples of them all. Makes conservation tangible. They can just pick up their phones, their laptops, tablets and do something that actually makes impact on the reef. Then you end up with results that are you know, pretty much within 1% of what the trained experts are saying. You know, I think it blew everyone out of the water with how well it actually did. Essentially anyone without any training can do this. Right now, across the world, we're at an average of 22 images being analysed per person. The average in the first year was not even one per person. That is an incredible result. More data, more understanding of what's happening at these reefs, it can give you a much better understanding of where to target protections. Hey Aruna, it's great to catch up with you. How are you going? Great, man. Great, nice Andy. Good. Nice to see you again. Uh, yesterday we mm -hmm. reached 50,000 analysis complete. So if you think about where we came from, it's really awesome. It's an iterative process. We yeah. try which model is the best for this particular problem to solve. There has been a lot of change. There's new models coming up. We can try a few more other models to see if we can get even more accurate than this. Amazing, that's great. It's so much more accessible to global citizens to be a part of this effort. And I think that's only a positive thing. What you need on the Great Barrier Reef is partnerships. You can't go in it alone. Making sure that Trish and owners are involved in all aspects of that project. We've been working together for a good number of years. It's because of those years that the partnership has built up. You know, 21st century conservation needs to really embrace the idea that everyone's in it, everyone needs to be part of it, because that's the only way you're going to get the kind of scale that's really required. 
from one of the biggest tech companies in the world to a kid in a primary school. For the very first time, we are here now. We have all of the ingredients. It's working. There is a, a whole world of stuff that we could do. And if you can find the right people, the right organizations, the right talent, you can actually move mountains.